So in this segment, we're going to talk about using custom control macros to create repeatable events. So a custom control macro allows me to apply a bunch of button presses as well as device control and other elements into a single button press, thus making it easy and simple for me to perform one button and have something take place. On the panel, you've got four bank buttons. When I select a bank, the mnemonics will go into a split mode. The bottom half of the mnemonics are going to show me the name of the source, while the top half will show me the name of my mnemonics. There's four banks with 16 buttons, and again, all this saves with each show file. So what I can do is select my bank that I want to have the macros in, and then go into edit mode by pressing the edit button. So now while they're green, I can select a button, nothing will take place while I'm in the custom control menu. Now I can start recording by hitting the start button and now they're going to blink red. While it's recording you can choose whether or not it records durations. I recommend not recording durations because there's a lot of button presses you want and you don't want to be going back in and deleting all of this time that's that's being added. When we need to insert pauses we'll insert those using the the insert button. So an example would be I want to go to camera one with a dissolve, always go clean. So by double tapping background, that inserts the double background press, which will include any active keyers for me. And then I want to hit the auto trans button. So it's a very simple custom control macro, but it allows me to have a button which is now going to, and I want to get out of the menu, so I can press any button, like say, transition area button. But now, no matter what I'm doing, if in key four I have my graphic on air, and it's over top of, say, Studio 3 here, now when I recall that macro, it'll always transition cleanly to camera one. So I don't have to think about it, I don't have to select my background and my keyers. That's always my dissolve clean to camera one. Some of the other things that you can do is you can start including things like device control. So we have our expression graphics system, which is hooked up. And I've gone and I've dropped in some of these lower thirds or some of these other graphics. And maybe what I really want to do is I want to transition to camera one because it's my wide shot and I want to bring in my locator and bug. I've assigned those over here to item number 16. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to edit this macro again. So I hit edit, select it, and now I can press edit again. And this drops into the edit menu, allowing me to see all of my events and my total duration. So now I'm just stepping through one at a time and I come to the end. So this is after that auto trans. So I could insert a fixed pause or a fixed delay that it waits, as well as I can insert a manual delay, also known as a hold. So if I hit insert, we start recording again. I can hold down the insert button, and now this row changes. So now I can insert a hold, or one frame, two frame, three frame, four frame, five, 10, 15, 20, 25, and 30. And if what I wanted was 90 frames, I can simply just go 30, 60, 90. So now, it's put in that 90 frame pause. I now want to go to my device control menu for my expression. Because it's in a keyer, I can simply toggle the key select menu to toggle the menu to get me to the device control for the source that's in that keyer. If I was going to do this on a background bus, I could simply press the bus. It would also take me to that menu. Now I could send all sorts of different commands. There's up and down, so I can actually move the bar up and down. I can send the take command, which will take something online. I can select the next, which will take it and then move the bar to the next element, allowing me to advance through my sequence of graphics. I can also specify things like resumes, clears for individual channels and layers, or everything on a channel. I can do a read, which would move the bar to the specific item I want, and then take it online. You can also 
send a take ID and a takeoff line, being able to take it off air. You can also just move the bar for setting focus. Maybe I want to prepare something and then I want to manually advance it. And finally, you can also send the take ID with the take command. This will allow you to take something without actually moving the bar. Very useful when you're doing a two-man operation and you don't want the preview moving. Or if you're manually advancing items but you have certain graphics you always want to be able to take with a custom control macro to not move your focus bar around. So here we're going to pick 16. So I just scroll my knob, I get take ID 16, I can specify the channel, in this case it's a single channel device, so channel 1, and I can even toggle and select the layer in the graphics system. So here we'll leave it at layer 0. And then I click the take command. So that will take the graphic in the graphic system and now what I want to do is make sure that I bring the key on air if it wasn't off air. So again we go back to that insert menu and we say we want to transition a key. I select in my menu key 4 and I click the on state and then we hit insert. So now what it's going to do for me it will dissolve it on air if the key was not already active. So now we've got our key on air in our custom control macro. We can come back and we can stop recording. So now I can see that I've got my steps. Step one, it was selecting camera one and preset. Step two, it was going to set the transition area to dissolve. It was then going to set it up so it'll always take whatever's on air, off air clean. It'll then transition the MLE. It will then pause for 90 frames. It will trigger the event on the expression and then it will dissolve the key on so that it will always come on air. So if we change the way we've got our switcher operating, so here I was on Studio 3, maybe we did have a, a little DVE box on air as well. So now when we run that, mat, that custom control macro this time, now you'll see it dissolves in clean and then brings on our key. So nice, simple, and we always get exactly what we expected. And it's a repeatable event that you can do over and over again. And that's how you can use custom control macros. You can get very creative, or you can use it for simple events that allow you just to have it be very quick and repeatable.